How are you guys doing? It's Alejandro from the Brazzlers team. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to create a PDF from any dashboard that you use. So today's example, we're going to use the Browserless account dashboard where you can see your sessions, your credit, all of that. Might be the case that someday you need to generate a PDF out of these type of dashboards, right? And you don't want to do it manually every time. So that's where you can use our service to do it automatically. So let's jump right into it. All right, so to get started, let's open up our terminal, create a directory. Uh, let's call it PDF demo. All right, so now that we're in our PDF demo folder, uh, let's create a new project. Let's give it a package name. We're good to start. So now let's open this in our preferred text editor. I will use Visual Studio Code. All right, so now that we've created our project, let's create our first entry point. So this will be our entry point. Let's save it as index.js. All right, so now that we've created our entry file, we're going to install the library Puppeteer Core. So Puppeteer Core is a bit different from Puppeteer. The only difference is that it doesn't have the binaries since the Chrome binaries are actually going to run in the cloud that browserless hosts. All right, there we go. It's installed now, we can import it. Now I'm going to put all of our code inside an iffy so that it runs instantly. Cool, now let's run all of our code inside here. So first we have to connect to browserless. And the way we connect to browserless is by creating a browser. So let's do const browser await puppeteer. We're going to use the connect method and we need to send it a browser WebSocket endpoint, which is a WebSocket secure. And we need to append our token here. To get a token, you just have to create an account at browserless. So something like this. You go to browserless, click on sign up, just click on the try free plan. You get six hours for free. Just click next, your email next, verify, and you're good to go. You log in. Once you're in your account, just go over here to API key. You can copy that and paste it here. So now that we have a browser, we're going to create a tab. So we'll call it page. And once we have our page, let's just go to that URL. So let's copy paste this URL and we're going to do await page dot go to, we need to send it the URL. And remember to always close your browser. If you don't close your browser with browserless, we're going to charge every second that your browser is running. So you do want to close the browser. Now let's run this index.js just to see what happened. All right. So we didn't get any error messages, which is good, but we didn't see any information. So we don't know what's going on in the browser. We're just working blind here. So let's just log away page title. Let's just log the title of the page. And let's see what happens now. Let's run it again. All right, browserless account. So that is correct. As you can see the name, the title of this tab is browserless account. So we're in, okay? So an even better way to see what's going on is you can return a screenshot. So we'll just do a wait page dot screenshot. So let's call this screenshot dot PNG, simple. Let's run again. And as you can see, we have a screenshot. So this is the page, right? Okay. So if I go to that page, we can see that there is an email and a password uh, field. So if we click right click and select inspect, we can see all these selectors, right? And this field actually has an ID field called login email. So we're going to grab this selector. We're going to use that. 
well, let's go back to our index.js. Let's do await page.type. We'll give it this selector, it's an ID. So we'll add the hashtag. And then what the email we want to use is. So let's just see that in action. All right, so as you can see, we typed in the email. Now we just have to type in the password. Let's copy paste this. Let's find the ID for the password. Let's log in password. And we'll give it the login password here. So once we've typed in our credentials, we want to click on the submit button. So let's go back and see what selector the submit button has. So there are several ways you can grab a selector. Really easy one is just right click it, copy selector. I guess it's the lazy way to do it. You can do it even more, you know, uh, precise. And we're gonna do page click, right? We'll put this selector there and let's just add a timeout. So wait for timeout, we'll give it five seconds to load and let's run this again oh we got an error i missed the hashtag so i need to add a hashtag here to the selector and let's run it again all right so it typed in the email the password and i'm not sure it clicked on sign in let's give it some more time and if it doesn't work then we might not be able to use the lazy way to get that selector and we'll have to do something uh, more refined. Okay, so it's saying that there is no login email selector found. I think it hasn't loaded the selector yet. Okay, so we need to add an option to this go to and wait until, okay, and then we'll wait network idle two or zero. So zero is for zero processes left or two is for two processes left. When do you use one or the other? Basically, zero is for single page applications and two is for long polling pages. So you can try one and then try the other, it doesn't work. Let's try this again. So now it's going to wait for the page to load before it looks for that selector. Okay, so no error messages. So it looks like that option to wait for network it'll work so let's look at our screenshot png great so now we're in all right however we want to create a pdf out of this so let's change that screenshot to pdf so we'll run it again and there we go so this is our pdf now i don't really like the looks of it so we need to tweak this, all right? So don't expect your final result to come in the first line of code that you write. So let's keep working on this and get the desired PDF that we want. So first of all, I can see that the background is not printing. So when you're working with PDFs, usually what happens is the page changes its styles to print styles instead of screen styles. So let's just tell it that we actually uh, want to print that background. Okay. So that is another option called print background and we'll just give it true. We also want to add an await page emulate media type to screen instead of print. All right. So let's do that. Run it again. All right. So let's look at the result much better, right? So now this has the styles that we actually want it to have. Now, I really don't want to wait 10 seconds every time I log in, right? So instead of putting a timeout for time, let's wait for a selector. So what do we actually want to load? Let's just say I want this graph to load. So I'm going to grab this class called chart.js render monitor. And I'll go back to the code say you know what I want you to wait for a selector I'll change this for 
that particular selector. All right, let's run it again. And this time I should wait less time. Shouldn't do forcefully 10 seconds. Okay, so it timed out. And good thing is that we actually have a screenshot here. So I'm actually logged in to an account called admin, but I'm trying to access and called called ENG and there's no metrics available yet. So that's why it's not working. So let's log into that ENG. All right. So now I created some requests that we should have successful. There we go. Now I see there was four successful. So now this chart should come up. So let's try running this again. All right. So it took less than 10 seconds. Now let's look at it here just to make sure it's working properly. Great. It's working properly. It's looking good. I didn't have to wait 10 seconds. What's next? Well, maybe in your PDF, you want to remove something, right? Maybe I don't want this uh, panel on the left. So good thing is that we can actually manipulate HTML before we generate the PDF. So let's try to do that. Let's try to take away this panel on the left. And how we're going to do that is with a page evaluate. So we need to get the selector for that panel. So as you can see, we have this class called sticky nav, right? So I just want to see if this selector is actually unique or if several elements in the DOM. All right. So there's only one. So this is a good selector. It's a good class that we can use to uh, scope this panel. So let's go back to the code and we're going to create this var called left panel document dot query selector all right so now we have our left panel node and what we're going to do is remove the left panel so let's go to the parent node and remove the child left panel so that will delete the left panel let's try to run this now Let's look at our PDF and perfect. We've removed that left panel. Now say you want to add something. It's the same principle. So inside this, for example, let's change this sessions text and we'll grab this text white MB. These two classes and let's change this document query selector. Let's target this, grab the inner HTML and assign something to it sessions on and then we'll add the date so we haven't created this date let's do it now let's run it again and of course it failed because i failed to add the dot indicating that it's a class so i'll change that run it again let's take a look at that all right so now we change the sessions you get the idea we can change whatever we want we can also change if these margins are too big for you we can actually modify the columns this is actually detailed in the article that we posted so take a look at the article that we pasted down in the description if you want to just copy paste the code and modify it i hope you can grab this code and use it in your own use case let us know if you have any questions in the comments below feel free to reach out in the channels that we leave in the description. We also have a bunch of examples on Replit, so go check them out. If you're just getting started, it will be very useful for you. So again, this was Alejandro. Like and subscribe to the channel. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys later.